I'm your host from the most local 23, you're joining me for a Night in Shining Suit, Chapter 20. For a brief moment in time, you were incredibly happy. There was love, peace, and possibilities. Once you'd let go of your fear, being with Ryder was the most natural thing in the world. He promised you forever. You believed him. What? What did you say? Ryder's been in an accident. They don't know if he's going to make it. He's in surgery. Your knees turn to jelly. And you crash to the floor. The phone drops next. No. No. Janice is calling her name. She's barely audible over the pounding in your ears. He promised me forever. Astrid! Put your phone back to your ear. Where? I, I need... I, I need to get a flight. Helen, Ryder's mother, has already booked a flight for you. A car is on the way to pick you up. Astrid, honey... Are you going to be okay? Just tell me where to go. When you arrive, a car will pick you up and bring you right to the hospital. What's happening? He's in surgery. That's all I know. We're gathering here, and we'll be here when he wakes up. You nod and realize that Janice can't see it. Yeah, uh, that will be good for him, to be surrounded by the people he loves. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. The trip from LAX to JFK is a complete and total blur. Looking back, you'll realize that you were in shock. <clears throat> Your brain hasn't quite processed what's happening. Ryder is still in surgery. They've been working on him on and off for 28 hours. He died on the table twice. The thought stops your breath. He promised me that we were forever. He said we'd, he'd never hurt me. He's not keeping his damn promises. A hand passes in front of your face and you look up startled. A pair of emerald green eyes pinched with concern stare back. Astrid? Uh, yes? Oh God, please tell me he's okay. He's alive. I'm Paris, his sister. I wish we'd been able to meet under better circumstances. Now that you're looking closely, you can see the signs of strain around her mouth and eyes. She's been crying. Paris, I... I wish the same. I'm so sorry. Standing, you pull her into a hug. Her narrow shoulders begin to shake as she cries silently within your warm arms. It's going to be okay. He's a fighter. She sniffs and nods against her shoulder. My brother will come back for you. I know it. He'll live if only to see you smile again. Her words bring fresh tears spilling against your cheeks. It takes everything to keep the sobs back at bay. Another woman joins you. She's older, but still beautiful. Ryder has her eyes. We have the best surgeons in the country working on him. He'll come through this. I... I'm so sorry we had to meet like this. Honey, I've heard so much about you that I feel like I already know you. Don't stand on ceremony. Come here and give me a hug. You probably need it just as much as I do. You let Ryder's mother enfold you in a warm embrace. Tears spill against the woman's expensive coat, jacket. Thank you. I did need that. When he recovers, we'll spend better time with each other. Don't worry. Her accent is more pronounced than the more upset she becomes. And without thought, you pull her into a hug. I will look forward to that. Come. We're waiting upstairs. Janice called to ask if you'd arrive, and so I sent Paris to find you. I admit, I, I couldn't wait to meet the most important woman in my son's life, though. Your family, though, Astrid. You don't have to wait here in the cafe for news. <clears throat> Ooh, trying to get it upset. You follow the women upstairs in a private hospital room. It's too quiet, but there's a comfortable chairs to sit in. There's a man there that looks like Ryder, but older. He's pacing. When he sees your group, he starts talking. Those bastards are in jail. And if I have to say any say, they'll stay there. <sighs> Good, Richard. They could have killed our son. How... How extensive are his injuries? That doesn't matter. How will you keep them in jail? Trust me. We'll find a way. I know people in this town. Driving drunk under rage will have damned consequences. 
It doesn't matter if they come from with good families and when they're tried as adults. Richard, this is not the way to do this. There's a justice system in this country for a reason. That's important. What's important is our son. And since God didn't give me with the ability to be a doctor, I'll do for him what I can. Maybe Scott down at the DA's office can help me out. Watch the back and forth conversation between the two of them and end up even more confused. Well, I appreciate the effort. Thank you. Richard holds his hands out and smiles. It's easy to see that this is where Ryder gets his roguish grin. And who is this enchanting creature? Richard. Helen's voice sounds weary. Put your hands down. This is Astrid, your son's fiance. She's not on the market. Oh. Is your husband a playboy and a flirt? Sweetheart, this is Richard, Ryder's father. Don't worry. Ryder is nothing like him. Voice is pitched in a confident tone, but loud enough that Richard can hear. It's nice to meet, uh, finally meet the woman who has captured my son's heart. For a while, I thought he'd end up like his mother. Cold and incapable, falling in love. <laughs> Damn! I can see where Ryder gets his poignant truthfulness. Your mouth drops open and your eyes wide surprise. Ah, uh, better he is that than like his father who falls in love with anything with a pair of breasts. Okay, he gets it from both. It's apparent they still have un a, a lot of unresolved issues. If you two don't stop bickering, Astrid is going to dump Ryder just so she doesn't have to deal with your drama. So stop it. Ugh, I'm sorry, dear. Too soon for you to have witnessed this. Uh, Helen, you'll have to wait until after the wedding to tear into me. I'm, uh... Why would you say not Ryder's fiance? I'm more worried about Ryder. He's what's important here. God, I wish I had come to New York with him. I, I would have been with him. Oh, darling, then he'd be worried about you as much as, as well as making himself better. You can't plan for accidents like this. You can only mitigate the aftermath. He's going to pull through this, just so you two can have your happily ever after, Astrid. Helen pulls you into a fierce hug. Honey, as soon as he's better, you can bet he's going to ask you to marry him. The thought of Ryder not waking up from surgery is enough to make you want to vomit. After two more hours with no news, Paris convinces you to go grab a coffee with her at the cafe. There you talk about Ryder, the accident in life. She orders two mochas and a piece of cake to share before leading you to a table. Once there, you talk about Ryder's condition, the accident, and life. And anything in the stop, the panic screams in your head. My brother loves you so much, you know? Fresh tears overflow and run down your chin. It feels like someone's turned on a faucet. I love him too. I, I wish I'd figured that out sooner. God, I wish I could tell him that. What if I can't ever say that to him again? He's a fighter, Astrid. He won't give up knowing that you're waiting for him. You know that, right? I do know that. I've been so excited to meet you. I thought all he cared about was his business, but then he started acting so crazy. I knew something was up, so I made him tell me. She chuckles at the memory. <clears throat> what makes you think it was because of me? Because I've never seen him so giddy over a business deal. It's true. He wasn't even that happy when he opened up the oil... Wow. I was going to say the oil rig, but... The Rick style. He walked around her mooning when he wanted to be in Malibu. He did not moon. Oh, he did. He was nearly unbearable. I couldn't get him to go out with me. He just went to all the meetings all the time. I think he was doing everything he could to get back to you. You know, as soon as I found out he had money and notoriety, I pushed him away. It, it was just wasted time. I do know. It drove him crazy. You're the first woman who ever turned him away because of money. I don't want a complicated relationship. I thought he pitied me. I was a fool. He's worth the complication, Astrid. I promise you that, and he's the sweetest man I know. No matter how much he tries to hide it, he really is. 
He's also a goddamn saint for putting up with me. He wanted to give you time to realize your feelings. That's not like him, you know. He sees what he wants, and he goes after it with unrelenting focus. That's how I know that he's in love. He's letting things happen on your timetable instead of his. Sitting him straighter with your shoulders back, you give her a nod. I'm going to let him know every day for the rest of my life how much he means to me. I just need him to get through this, okay? Paris's phone rings and your heart leaps with hope. Let me take this. <clears throat> she answers and listens for a few minutes before nodding and hanging up. He's out of surgery and in recovery. The doctors say he's stable. He'll be unconscious for a few more hours. Oh, thank God. When can we see him? I don't know. They didn't say. Mom wants us to come up to the room just in case we can see him immediately. Perfect. God, I can't wait to see him. See that he's okay. You both throw your trash away and head up to the room. Unfortunately, they give you disappointing news. The doctors tell you that he won't, can't be moved out of ICU until tomorrow morning. The writer's family gives you the keys to his apartment and try to call a car to take you there. Darling, you can't stay here all night. They won't let you in to see him. Come back in the morning and you'll be fresh. He'll want you to, to be the first thing he sees. I... I guess I could use a nap. But please call me as soon as he wakes up. Of course, we will. I promise as soon as they tell us we can see him, I'll send a car. Reluctantly, you go, but knowing that you'll be seeing him, his things being in this place, and where there are so many memories is hard. You decide to call Nicole to give your friends an update. She'll spread the news. Hey, girl, where are you? In Manhattan. Ryder was in an accident. Are you okay? Is he okay? Do you need me to come there? Tell me what happened. His skull cracked, and he had internal bleeding in his brain. The last words are barely whispered. There was worry of extensive brain damage. He's gonna be okay, Astrid. People keep saying that, but I can't get in to see him. I have to look at him so I'll know for myself. What do you mean need me to do? Look after the shop. I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. Tell the guys. Honey, we're all going to be pulling for you. You have the epic romance. Nothing is going to change that, okay? You nod before realizing that she can't see it. Yeah. Don't worry about the business. I'll call your jerks up, your jerk of a cousin, and get the keys. I just hired a new receptionist last week. Adam will be able to introduce you to her. Damn, I was hoping to get away with just a phone call. I don't know why you don't like Adam. He's a little prickly, but he's not that bad. He's a prick, all right. Wait, have you two ever been a thing? What? No! We're not talking about me. Okay, fine. Just thank you, Nicole. Thank you for taking care of things. You hang up, and then you see your ring on Ryder's dresser. I should put it on. I just want a little please of you with me. But I hope I don't have to give it back. The ring feels cold against your finger, but it reminds you of the first time you put it on your finger. He was smiling so big when he put it there. I was a fool to have ever given it back to him. I was a fool for not realizing that he actually wanted me. You fall asleep on a tear-stained pillow, whispering promises to God that if he makes it through, you'll never give up on him again. It's a rough night of little sleep and a lot of tossing and turning when you finally give up. The sun hasn't begun to climb over the buildings. <clears throat> I might as well go to the hospital and check in. <clears throat> Damn frog in my throat. It's a short trip and Janice and Jake are already there with Ryder's family. You made it. I'm so glad you came. I'm sorry I wasn't here when you arrived. She was in the middle of a complete meltdown. She wouldn't have done anyone any good. But Janice and Jake give you a warm hugs before pulling away. The doctors say he could wake up at any moment, but 
We shouldn't crowd him. It's okay. I can wait down in the cafeteria. Turn to go, and Helen grabs her hand. No, darling. You will be there front and center. He'll want to see you first. Janice leans in and whispers in your ear. I know you don't believe this, but you are the most important person in his life. Don't let your head get in the way of your heart. Your mouth feels dry as you inch into the room, seeing him lying there so still and vulnerable as like a punch in the gut. His monitor beeps with a steady rhythm, and the oxygen mask on his face doesn't hide the swollen bruises. What have they done to you? Your skin, your hand skims over his. You're afraid to touch him for fear of hurting him further. His eyes flutter. I, I, I think he's waking up. Richard, call the nurse. He's coming too. Paris grabs her hand and smiles. She seems a little nervous, but her courage makes you brave. Wiping a few stray tears from your eyes, you face a smile on your own face, and he needs to be encouraged. Uh, Mom? I'm here, babe. We're all here. Finally, his eyes are fully open. He looks around at each of the other faces. Wow. It's not like I'm a desk door guy. Smile. A few laughs, and Janice shakes her head. You dork. You had us so scared. Janice, Jake, it's good to see you. It's been forever. Paris, sweetheart, a mom and dad are in the same room. I must have been really hurt. <clears throat> he winces as if his chuckle hurts his ribs. Then his eyes fall on you. He gave him what hope, what you hope, is a beaming smile. Uh, who's this? Dad, don't tell me you have a new girlfriend. Your world comes to a sudden and complete standstill. Oh, shit. What? What's going on? Did I say something wrong? Who is she? With a blink, you pull the ring off and slip it into your pocket. He doesn't remember you at all. Hmm. Well, I mean... Things like that happen. We're... I'm surprised they didn't color his face up, you know, make him look like he really did get the shit if he did. I mean, but that really, um, that really sucks. <sighs> hopefully, because we've got two more chapters, hopefully he, I mean, swelling in the brain, things like that, it happens. And maybe with time, maybe the memories will come back. Maybe you just need a helping hand to remember things, go through things like where you first met, or who knows. I have a semblance, I have like a, a semblance of what's going to happen, and I don't want to spoil it, but I think I know what's going to happen with this book. I really do. And it kind of reminds me of the anime movie, Your Name. If you guys haven't watched that, you really should. Um, something tells me that's how this is going to go. With that being said, we have two chapters left to go. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head on down description below. Links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. It's greatly appreciated. Also, feel free to head on down. We got a Twitch. Oh my god, guys. I'm going to be streaming on YouTube and Twitch. I'm trying to branch out, varying content, multi-platforms, things like that. So follow me on Twitch, especially if you want to see me stream. Um, without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.